there is no doubt that RVs have a lot of moving parts and a lot of parts that are going to break eventually, even if you take care of your RV. And those broken parts are, are kind of a fear. You know, people that buy an RV, they're like, oh, well, what happens if something breaks? And they, so they buy these extended service protection plans. Before we roll this little interview, I think is, is very, very telling. Uh, do you remember if you're my age or around my age, a little bit older, when we went to school, there was something called shop class that the boys had to take, you know, metal shop or welding or wood shop. And we built things. We learned how to drill holes and saw with a saw and weld and do all these different kinds of things. Girls took homemaking or home economics. They learned how to sew and do all the things, you know, back traditional girls used to do back then. There used to also be something called a practical living classes. Uh, the, the teacher would take the class out, show you how to change a flat tire show you how to put water in your radiator, how to check the oil, how to check the transmission fluid, how to balance a checkbook, you know, practical living before computers took over our lives. All those classes, all those things that we used to have to take in school, I think we look back on it and go, I am so glad I did that because it, it's helped me as an adult. Unfortunately, it's not that way. Not that way anymore in school and more and more people or fewer and fewer people know how to turn a wrench. Fewer and fewer people understand how things work. And so when you buy an RV, there is a lot of stuff going on. So how do you protect yourself when you don't really know how to fix things? Well, a lot of people buy an extended service protection plan. I personally don't believe in them. However, for the person that doesn't know how to turn a wrench, for the person that doesn't want to have to fix things and tinker and work on their RV, an extended service protection plan might be a good thing to look into. Up now is my friend Kevin Fraser from Cheyenne Camping Center. He's going to give you his take as we talk about ESPs and how people have changed today compared to years ago, including yours truly. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the extended service plans, the ESPs that dealers make a lot of money on. And, you know, and, I, and people really want them. Um, well, why do you think that is? Is it because the automotive industry has trained us to think that well, I've got a warranty so everything's covered? I used to think that. I used to think it was training, but I know now it's not. Alan, you and I are of a certain age and we've turned a wrench or two in our lives. We know basically how things work, but if somebody shows us a high-tech doohinky from the last 20 years, we're clueless. So when somebody who hasn't turned a wrench or even changed a tire is confronted with a brand new machine that does have some high-tech doohinkies on it, they want the security of knowing that no matter what goes wrong, it's going to cost $100 deductible. Okay, now that's, that's if people remember, it's not a warranty, it's insurance. If I got a $100 deductible insurance that prevents me from spending $1,000 on a new refrigerator, that's okay. If I got a $100 deductible that gets me a microwave, maybe I can go to the local store and buy my own microwave and put it in, but guess what, today's people won't do that. They, they, there's, there's, there's fewer and fewer of us of, of them do it yourselfers. You and I know that, mm -hmm. and and um, people around here that grew up on the farm, they don't think of anything, of uh, of uh, uh, rehabilitating, rebuilding, manufacturing their own stuff. But modern folks want to have. We're not modern, Alan. We, modern we have this this technology yeah. in our hands. And do you have an do you have an extended plan on your smartphone? Actually, I do not. Oh, well. <laughs> they wanted $17 a month for insurance on this thing. I'm like, you know, well, if I drop it, I drop it. I'll be responsible for it. The, see, you and I think like that. <laughs> but other people think I don't want to hit to the budget. And especially if, if, I'm, if I'm on a budget and I got payments on an RV, I don't want to think it's going to cost me more than $100. But, Kevin, it's not just $100. It's $100 and an extended period of time that you don't know how long that period's going to be. Because you may have your RV out of service for months. Oh, well, now that's a different problem altogether. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not no, just $100. We don't have services. We don't have RVs out of service months here. Oh, 
even with parts problems, there's always substitution. There's always a way that you can get it sorted out. And I'm not the guy that's that's going to endorse uh, extended service plans. I, I, I would always say, well, first of all, an extended service plan shouldn't cost more than two grand on most RVs ever. But I could put that two grand away. You and I remember Christmas clubs. Put it away. And if something goes wrong, use the two grand for the something wrong. And if five years go by and you sell or trade off your RV, you probably still have that two grand. When service plans go stupid is when you're not paying two grand for them or 1200 for them. That's where they should be in that range. It's when the guy tells you, oh, yeah, well, the service plan is $5,800, but it covers everything. You know, if that refrigerator in this RV were to go on the fritz when it's out of warranty, that'll cost $12,000 to replace. I hear this all the time. You know how much it'll cost to replace? $1,200. But they scare people. Fear, that's what they use. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, if you're the holder of an RV and you've got an, an extended service plan and you pay more than two grand for it, Demand your refund, and if you still think you need the coverage, shop for one in the open market. So even if I bought from, I know if I buy from Camping World, I can uh, cancel my ESP. I can cancel an ESP with anybody I buy from. Yeah, awesome. yeah, sure, sure. And and that's guaranteed in every state. And the, in the state, there's an insurance commissioner. This is an insurance product. You should get back pro rata what you didn't use. If it's a five-year plan and you tune and you ask to cancel it after one year, you get back 80%. And you're guaranteed by law that you can get that back. So the question is, is an ESP right for you? I can't answer that. If you're somebody that doesn't mind tinkering with things, you know how to do a few uh, basic repairs on your RV, maybe you don't need that extended service protection plan. Maybe you can take that money and put it in a savings account. Don't touch it. In a savings account, then in three or four years, if you haven't had a claim, guess what? You still got your money. If you do have a claim, you'll have the money to fix most any item. A lot of things in RVs nowadays are pretty well made. Air conditioners are pretty well made. They're not perfect. You know, hot water heaters, most of the time, last quite a while, as long as you take care of them. So if you feel good about making basic repairs in your RV, you may not need an ESP. If you are hesitant, if you feel overwhelmed with the thought of uh, uh, having a problem, a breakdown, and you need that ESP to give you confidence and comfort, then maybe it is for you, but shop around. You don't have to buy the ESP from that dealer. I will tell you that if you do buy an ESP from the dealer, a good dealer will honor that. Be much more willing to honor it than if you come in, you're a third party, you buy an ESP from somebody else, you bring it to that dealer. You, The truth is you may not get waited on. That's the truth. The de oh, that's, you may not get waited on. So do you need an ESP? I don't know. You have to answer that question. Uh, can you cancel your ESP? Of course you can cancel it. They have to give you your money back on the unused premium. They have to, minus a, 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 a processing fee. The problem is they never make it easy. It's always difficult and it will take a little bit of time to get your money back, but they will give it back to you. Now here's the deal. If you do cancel your ESP, you have a loan on your RV, Oftentimes, you won't get a check back. Let's say you're going to get $5,000 back on your ESP. They may not send you the check. They'll send it to your lender, and it will go against the balance that you owe on your RV. And that's good anyway, because you're going to have to pay that money. You might as well get it taken off the back end so you owe a whole lot less on your RV. Hopefully, this made sense. You may have to watch this video again. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. You think ESPs are a great thing or not so much? I kind of say... It depends. Let me know. Post in the comments below. I read every one, listen to every voicemail. And I am uh, I'm grateful to you and grateful to Kevin Fraser for being my go-to guy when it comes to all things RV related. I'm Alan Warren, the RV wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. See you next time.